The Bee Gees emerged as a highly influential pop group during the 1960s and 1970s, leaving an indelible mark on the music scene. Their impact extended well into the 1980s, playing a significant role in shaping the disco craze of that era. Whether you were alive when the Bee Gees started or born years later, you probably have been caught trying to strut while staying alive was playing. Regrettably, we have lost some of the Bee Gees members, leaving Barry Gibb as the sole surviving member. In this retrospective, We'll explore the circumstances of each Bee Gees member's passing and take a moment to honor the remarkable lives and careers they led. The Bee Gees' origins trace back to the birth of brothers Barry, Morris and Robin, born to parents Hugh and Barbara Gibb in Douglas, the capital of the Isle of Man. Barry came into the world in 1946, while the twins Morris and Robin followed in 1949. In 1955, the Gibb family, originally from Douglas, Isle of Man, relocated to Manchester, their father's hometown. Subsequently, Leslie, their sister, and Andy, the youngest brother, were born in England. The family took another significant step in 1958, emigrating to Australia and settling in Redcliffe, Queensland. In this setting, the brothers started performing to earn some extra cash. Bill Good recognized their talent and hired them to showcase their songs at the Redcliffe Speedway racer track. The audience was so impressed that they would toss money to the Gibb brothers as a token of appreciation during their performances. Subsequently, they crossed paths with radio host Bill Gates, who bestowed upon them the moniker The Bee Gees. This name cleverly combined Bill Good's surname with the initials of the brothers' last name. By the 1960s, the brothers began recording music professionally. The group's name was spelled out in the unique spelling we know now. As their brother Andy grew up, he joined the group as a singer. The brothers could sing beautifully, and Morris could also play a multitude of instruments. Their popularity soared with hits such as Wine and Women and Spicks and Specks. However, their major breakthrough occurred in the late 1960s when they returned to England embarking on a journey to craft a distinctive and influential sound. Before we tell you more about how each of the Bee Gees died, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe our channel for more. Andy Gibb Although not formally a member of the Bee Gees, the youngest brother, Andy, showcased his singing prowess and collaborated with his older brothers on several songs. He even joined them for live performances before his untimely passing. Andy kick-started his singing career in Australia and his debut solo record, Words and Music, became a notable success. Following this triumph, he made the decision to relocate to the United States to further pursue his musical journey. In 1977, he released his first album, Flowing Rivers. The album's massive success propelled him to stardom, making him one of the most acclaimed solo artists in the USA, the UK, and Australia. However, it was during this period that he grappled with drug addiction, and by the time he was working on his second album, his substance abuse had reached a critical and concerning level. Missed performances and absent studio sessions, coupled with financial struggles, marked a challenging period for him. Though he successfully overcame his drug addiction through rehab, but this wasn't enough to get him back to pursuing his musical career. Tragically, he passed away on March 10, 1988, just five days after celebrating his 30th birthday, succumbing to heart inflammation. Despite the brevity of his career, it's essential to acknowledge and appreciate the remarkable talent he possessed. His older brothers frequently spoke of Andy's brilliance, cherishing and recalling him fondly in interviews where they discussed his life and career. Robin Gibb Born on December 22, 1949, Robin Gibb possessed a stunning vibrato voice that he recognized as a potential asset from a young age. While residing on the Isle of Man, he shared his aspirations with a neighbor, expressing his determination to form a band one day and achieve wealth through his music. Robin was the lead singer of the Bee Gees and wrote many of the group's songs. He also wrote songs for other groups. Along with Barry and Morris, 
he wrote only one woman for the marbles. In 1969 and 1970, Robin Gibb briefly explored a solo career. Concurrently, the Bee Gees encountered challenges as a group. However, their resurgence took place in the 1970s, notably with the success of the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. On this album, Robin Gibb took the lead vocals for tracks like Staying Alive and How Deep Is Your Love. Additionally, he co-wrote all the original songs alongside his brothers. As the 80s unfolded, he expanded his collaborative efforts, frequently working with other artists. In 1980, Robin Gibb co-wrote and co-produced Jimmy Ruffin's album Sunrise. During the same year, he collaborated with Barry on writing a significant portion of Barbara Streisand's album Guilty. Transitioning into the 2000s, Robin ventured into a solo project, releasing an album titled Magnet. Robin Gibb lent his vocals to the theme song of the British comedy talk show, The Dame Edna Treatment. Among his final projects was a poignant tribute to the victims of the Titanic, a musical collaboration with his son, Robin John, showcasing his enduring commitment to creative expression. Sadly, he couldn't attend the premiere due to health problems. He was suffering from pneumonia and eventually ended up in a coma. He died of kidney failure on May 20, 2012, at 62. Maurice Gibb Born on December 22, 1949, approximately 30 minutes after his twin brother Robin, Maurice Gibb was a skilled musician and songwriter. His musical proficiency spanned the guitar, bass, keyboard, and percussion, making significant contributions to the Bee Gees sound. In their inaugural album, he played a pivotal role as the instrumentalist for Claustrophobia, one of their earliest hits. During the 1970s, Morris Gibb embarked on a solo career while simultaneously contributing to some of the Bee Gees' major hits. His solo endeavors included the release of a well-received song titled Railroad. Additionally, he worked on an album named The Loner, which, as of now, remains unreleased. In the 1980s, Morris Gibb recorded the song Miami, a musical score serving as the theme for a promotional film aimed at boosting tourism in Miami. He also composed the song Supernaturals, featured as the theme song for a film. Morris Gibb was widely regarded as one of the kindest and most amiable individuals in the entertainment industry. Described by his brother Robin as outgoing and gregarious, Morris had a penchant for socializing with A-list stars, including luminaries such as Sir Michael Caine, David Bowie, and members of the Beatles. Morris Gibb experienced a brief marriage to singer Lulu. His musical influences ranged widely, drawing inspiration from rock and country musicians such as the Beatles and the Everly Brothers. In the latter part of their careers, Morris resided in Miami alongside his brothers. He died on January 12, 2003, at age 53. He had suffered a cardiac arrest which resulted from a twisted intestine. Hugh and Barbara Gibb Barbara Pass, a dance band vocalist, crossed paths with drummer and band leader Hugh Gibb in the early 1940s. Their connection led to marriage in 1944. Despite Hugh's role leading an orchestra, he faced challenges securing gigs and, as a means of steady income, took on the role of a bread delivery man during his day job. Hugh Gibbs' bread delivery service played a pivotal role, bringing joy to numerous families during the war and post-war years. His performances were predominantly located in the north of England, Scotland, and the Isle of Man. Encouraged by his sister, the Gibb family considered moving to Australia in pursuit of better opportunities. While Hugh didn't explicitly direct his sons to embark on musical careers, his influence undoubtedly played a role in shaping their musical inclinations. Barbara's own musical background also left a mark on her sons. She actively encouraged them to sing and pursue their musical interests. She also helped them get their start with performing and meeting with record executives. Barbara also managed the Bee Gees during the early stage of their career. She eventually emigrated to Miami where her sons also lived. She died in 2016 at age 95.
Barry Gibb Barry, a sole surviving member of the Bee Gees, consistently participates in interviews and documentaries, sharing insights into his career and the Bee Gees journey. Expressing a profound sense of longing for his brothers, he has openly stated that he would trade all their hits just to have them back. The Bee Gees were an extraordinary musical group, and although we have sadly lost most of the members, we are fortunate that they have bequeathed us with an incredible body of work. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. Do you think the Bee Gees is still popular among the younger generations? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe Alanol if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.